Hello everyone, welcome to SAP Technomaniac. In this video, we will discuss the theory about the dollar batch. In my last two videos, we discussed how to read using the dollar batch operation, how to do the changes in the system using the dollar batch operations. We will see in this video, what all are the performance considerations we have to do. And apart from that, what is the difference between the 7.4 support package 9 and below and above 7.5 in the system so we can do the audit implementation accordingly for the dollar batch let's get started so we will come with the basic definition again so as you already know from my last video why we use dollar batch because we want to process the data parallelly we want to create read update delete in one single call we want to do all the things instead of making the parallel call or instead of using the expand query options we just want to put all the query options in one batch and we want to execute that in one go in the application layer that is called the batch processing enable multiple retrieval operation in a single http request the change set request can be posted along with the get request but it will be not processed parallelly there is one more important thing here parallelizations now we can put parallelly we can do a lot of things together but uh, when we read the data from the uh, backend system through the front-end applications we can do the parallelly read operations but we can't do parallelly all the change operations so we'll discuss about the parallel operations as well so we can say batch parallel operation how it should work first we have to make sure that we have to activate uh, the parallelization of uh, parallelization of batch operations batch queries so you have to go to the uh, spro inside the spro you have to go sap netware sap gateway service in implement backend o data channel and configuration setting and when you execute define parallelization uh, parallelizations of batch queries then this screen will open it should be checked and how many number of parallel queries you want to run you want to do the read operations parallelly how many queries you want to do that you have to define over here in this currently it is defined three so it is always recommended to give the number of parallel process keeping the system performance in mind because when we are uh, executing the any service from the front end for example we have five operations that that is doing the read operation inside the dollar batch operation or dollar batch if we are doing the parallelly five read operation instead of uh, for example we have the sales order data and we are reading the or in we can take the employed employee data as, as well as an example because we discussed the employee data in my last video so employee data for example i want to get the five employee data independently one two three four five i put the dollar batch one one by all the get operations for each and every uh, employee id employee id 1 employee id 2 employee id 3 now it when the uh, when the parallel processing is active and the maximum number of parallel queries is 3 so three three queries will be executed parallelly and rest two will wait to finish them then two again uh, those two queries will again run parallelly but the point is that three queries will run parallelly that should be available some work process in the system if the you, I am assuming that you know the what is the work processes in the application server. If you don't know, you can watch out my first video in the this YouTube channel. I created the RTR R three architecture where I have explained the different kind of work processes, dialogue work processes, and the uh, what we can say a uh, background work processes. A lot of things we have discussed. You can watch out that uh, that video. It will help you whenever you learn the basic concepts of anything. So that work process should be available. If work process is not available, then it will be not able to execute those queries parallelly. That is very important thing. And first thing we have to uh, globally, we have to activate, activate the parallel processing of those queries. Then only we can do. This is how the parallel processing we can activate. I will show you in the system also, but it's a very pretty simple SPRO. One more important thing over here, if your system version 7.4 and support package 9 and below you will not see this parallel processing option i in my system it was not there but in i use there is some different system that i took from and this is that is the reason i'm showing you guys and i will show you in the system also suppose uh, dollar suppose we are getting uh, 
this is the one of the example i will show you the batch also but suppose in the one batch uh, we have the three get request two post request one put request and one delete request in this case how it will run when will we these many three four five six seven queries we will send together using the batch operation to the backend system so three get request how it will work uh, it will be run parallelly how it will run parallelly because we have activated the parallel process processing activated so three will run parallelly using the if the three work process is available and then it will run parallelly once those complete then one post request will run then another post request will run this will be the sequence then put request and then delete request these operations what all are the change requests are there those will never run parallelly within the one chain set that's a very important thing and only the get queries will execute the parallelly the number of maximum parallel processing requests will be voided if the available work process in system is low or parallel processing for example um, at that time of processing of that query only the two work processes available then all the three queries of the read operations will be not read parallelly suppose we want to disable uh, the parallel processing for the particular service that also we can do there is two options are there either we can go to the this iwbp conf underscore service t code inside this t code uh, we have the configuration here we can pass our service name and we can deactivate uh, parallel parallelization of this particular batch request that also we can do and there is another options you can go to the our maintenance service t code you can click on the service implementation and once you click that uh, this screen will appear again you have to click on configuration and there also you can disable your parallel processing of those queries within the batch so there are some important point this parallel query process will be executed only for the local and front end system which has only one registered backups there is one more important thing uh, if you go to the man service t code you can define here multiple systems to get the data from the multiple system that that is called the uh, multi origin composition we want to get from the back end system for that particular service if it is uh, multi origin composition scenario that kind that time if you are getting the data from the crm as well ecc as well parallelly uh, in the both the system we are getting then the parallelization uh, parallel processing will not work for those query so that is very important thing and now we talk about the change set till now we have read about the read operations these all are the theory options we did the practical in my last video i will show you the batch uh, whatever the payload we are preparing for this thing but we already done that how it is uh, uh, this batch operations are activating the basic things we already understood but some of the things how the parallel processing i can show you in the system also but is it is more on theory i can consider okay and the third part the change set what is change set is the read operation we can do in the batch in the payload and we have the change set inside the change set we will do the uh, group the all the whatever the operation we want to do in in particular the change set using that change set we will update the data system we can create the data we can modify the data we can delete the data so change set under group one or more operation we can do insert update or delete operations retrieve the operation is not possible in the change set that is very important thing again one more important thing we can use one or more operations within the change set make sure there is no commit work statement this comes under the pitch uh, if you have multiple operations for the insert and update within the one chain set until and unless if you have one operation one operation and one chain set in one batch there will be no issue as soon as you have multiple operations you have one update and create you have create and delete within the one chain set or you have multiple chain set and in inside that we have update and delete i will tell you what is multiple chain set and within the one chain set or uh, the operation how the our payload look like that i will show you in upcoming slide but if we have that kind of scenario we, where we are doing the multiple operations of updation creation deletion or modification then you should not write the commit work inside your get entity method del not get entity sorry delete delete entity method insert modify entity method or 
or create entity method there are wherever the way i'm doing the some modification that you should not write the commit work if you write their commit works then before it will it will not execute further and you will get the dump that that is the scenario if you have multiple if if you have multiple chain operations if you have single chain operation within one batch set no issue it will work as soon as you have multiple chain operations to activate the multiple chain operation how you have to do that also i have shown you we have to uh, we have to enable this one what we can say chain set begin and chain set end method we have to uh, implement those method then only multiple uh, multiple operations you can do uh, within the chain set uh, within the chain set and the, as soon as you do the multiple chain uh, multiple operation and as soon as you implement those methods then you should not write the commit work that is very important thing in an operation within the chain set fail one more important something goes wrong within the one chain set we have created one chain set suppose we updated successfully created su successfully and we have three operation in in my above scenario for example we take if we have a one two three four operation within one chain set you did this posting correctly you did this posting correctly you got this put also you did correctly but when you were doing the deletion that time you got some error that time this entire processing will not happen this particular chain set goal get itself failed and you will get one error only in your response your chain set is not successfully updated because within the one chain set whatever we are doing that will be done in the one single sap luw here sap luw concept will come if you don't know what is the luw i have created the separate series what is sap luw and database luw how it works that i have created the separate sub series you can watch it out that but within the luw luw all the operations will be done luw means either it will be all the operation changes will be done or single change operation will not be done so this is the Thing they are telling if within the chain set single thing fail all the operation will be not done the neither that uh, in in our case if we have four operations the if fourth operation got failed failed then all four operation will be not performed on the database that is very important thing because these four operation belong to within one chain set if we have multiple chain set one chain set can get failed and another chain set can get get successfully because chain set will process within one luw in within within the one chain set we can have multiple operations i will show you the payload then you will understand the better so this is the one of the payload we have created whenever whenever we create the payload as i told you you have to give the your batch where it is starting batch underscore zero one and this is the ending of point of because i was not having here a space i put this is the sequence first here then it is starting for here and there i can right click pointer option like that i can write the pen so first one is the this one this batch operations it will start like this first from here to here then from here to here it's continuation part like that it is so we have one dollar batch operation inside this uh, in, sorry in dollar batch operation we have this payload we have we are sending if you see here we have multiple chain sets over here we don't have any read operation we have multiple chain set first chain set is this one you can see this is starting here and this is ending here second chain set is this one this is starting here and this is ending here two chain set is there in first chain set we have two operations first operation is the put and second operation is the delete in second chain set we have only one operation that is delete and if you see first operation is starting from here and ending here and second operation uh, was sorry first operation is starting from here and ending here and second operation is starting here and ending here here for only one operation it will start here so just think it out how many luws will be there here in this case so as i told you one chain set will have one luw so these two operation this put operation and this delete operation will be performed within one luw if delete got failed this put will not work 
and this uh, this again single de delete operation with, will be performed in one LUW because it's a different chain set. If I would have put this delete operation here in the same chain, chain set only, then it all the three operation would have executed in one LUW. So this is how our page look like, and this is how how we have to think whenever we are creating the we have, whenever we are performing our page operations. All our all the related and related operations we have to put within the chain set and then we have to perform something we want to achieve through the LUW that we can achieve through the chain set. Now go to the theory part again. So we have discussed uh, here and every chain set is treated as a separate SAP LUW as I told you and ensuring the all or nothing transaction behavior. If there are two chain set with some operation within the within it that implies two LUW. As I told you, uh, we have two chain set. One name is chain set, another name is chain set two. So there are two chain set. Both have different different name. This chain set is starting from here, and this chain set is starting ending here. And this is second chain set where we started again batch. And you can see chain set name is different over here. Is the chain set name is chain set two, and it is ending here with double days over here. So this is entire payload with two chain set and three operation. In one chain set, we have two operation. In another chain set, we have one operation. We can have along with this operation, so we can have read operation as well and another chain set also. And if you want to add some another operation within same chain set, that also you can do. So this is how the LUW concept work with the chain set, bed chain set. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, that is again, uh, these two methods are very important, chain set begin and chain set end, when we have, as soon as we have multiple operation, multiple si single chain set, single operation, no need to worry. If you don't have, only you have this one, uh, you have only chain set two and this one, chain set one is not there at all. Chain set one is not there, only have one operation in single bit, one change operation in single bit, that time, if you don't implement this chain set begin and chain set end method, then also it will work. No need to worry. As soon as you add another operation, uh, either it can be change, delete or modify or create anything. You have two operation, then you have to mandatorily you have to re-implement this method to work these two uh, operation together or it can be case it can be in available in same chain set or it can be in different chains. As soon as, as soon as you have two operation, you have to make sure you should implement. And as soon as you implement this chain set begin and chain set end method, you should not have any commit work in any of your entity modify entity method or create entity method or update ent entity method or delete entity method, which you are using in your dollar batch. If you have those commit works, that time it will dump and stop that itself because uh, the the framework have their own commit work because chain set work within the LUW after the end chain set they have their own commit work so if you put within the LUW if you would commit work obviously it will dump that is again one SAP core concept you have to know that thing so this is how it will work first chain set uh, begin method will work and then chain set will start and this chain set will end then chain set end will come then for second chain set again this chain set begin will start and second then this delete method will take care and then chain set end method will take care. This will be the sequence uh, when we execute the program. We saw little bit in my last video. Not that much complex. We saw only the one chain set operation. If you try it out with the multiple chain set operation that also you can try it out. Basic concept I have already explained. Let's go to the next one. Oh, okay. One more thing. If you didn't implement this method, the chain set begin and chain set end method redefined these two methods. And if you're trying to execute dollar base operation with multiple uh, modification operation in the system, we're using the delete, create, you have multiple operations on that particular entity, then you will get this message. Default chain set implementation allow only one operation. You can't do multiple operations. You can do only the one change operation. You either you can delete, you can create, you can modify whatever you want to do, you can do, but you can do one time only. As soon as you try to use two operation, you will get this error. Your service will service call will be accepted. You can see uh, it's uh, 202. It, it will be accepted, uh, but it's service call will be accepted like this. It, it's a 202, but you will get the error. 
this is the default com chain set will allow default chain set implementation allow only one operation multiple operation it will not allow your server within the service call it will get fail now go to the next next i just gave the example with the multiple with, with same chain set we have in this case we have one chain set only which is starting here and ending here we have only this bit starting here ending here but within the one chain set we have two operation one is the put operation and second second operation is the delete operation you can see and these two operation within the one chain set is there as soon as we have two operation we have to implement these two methods then only it will work otherwise we will get this error default chain set implementation allows only the one operation that is the reason i put this screenshot or i put this code and one more thing one more thing important thing is that you can see as you already know from my previous video after each operations we have two line space here and here also two line space and here also two line space these are the these are the important thing we have to follow whenever we create our payload now let's talk about the defer mode so as i shown you in my last video we have only these two method chain set begin and chain set end method because my system version was the below 7.4 or 7.4 support package 9 as soon as you have system version 7.4 and support package 9 and above you will be having one extra method that is called chain set process as well let me show you in the system uh, before going to system just uh, uh, let me put the theory part in this batch processing performance has been improved by introducing api chain set processing we have one extra method called the chain set process using that and we have something called defer mode that's very important and interviewer can ask what is the defer mode in the dollar batch operation that also we have to we have to know what is actual actually it is defer mode and defer mode processing introduced to achieve the performance handling multiple operation within the chain set i will explain you what how it will work so first we will think uh, we will see in the system uh, what is actually this defer mode and what all are the methods are there for that what i will do let me do escape discard i want to discard the changes and let me go here uh, the, inside the system you can see uh, we were having the sales order i'm just taking the example of the our dpc extension class you can see sales order 001 dpc extension class it is coming from this super class and this super class having this super class and this super class having this super class finally you can see this is the uh, our super class if you want to see the hierarchy you can control t you can click and you can see entire hierarchy over here from which super class it is coming and what is the super class of which super class that also you can see it's called loading ABAP type hierarchy so that is fine uh, it's uh, just showing only this resize display sort description okay that is fine not an issue uh, control T it's okay so this is our final DPC extension class so if you so this is the newer version that is the reason i opened in eclipse if you open in sc24 also it will open in the source code as editor you will not find the separate separate methods over there and this is the most super class of this one we can see how to see that you can go to this class and uh, in this dpc class and this is your dpc class if you click on this absolute data class this is your absolute data class if you click on this one it will take you to the main class which is the super super most class if you click on here control o there is a lot of methods are there as i shown you and last video previous videos uh, you can see there are some additional method introduced apart from chain set begin and chain set end there is something called chain set process as well is there so we'll talk about these three methods over here chain set begin and chain set end we have in older version also but uh these are also modified in this version and apart from that we have something called chain set process as well so let me go to the chain set begin and if you open with sc24 also there also you can open you can just go to this dpc extension class and you can see all this method list where you can see one of the method apart from chain set begin and end we have chain set uh, process as well if you see the uh, default implementation of this particular method you can see uh this implementation uh having something if you do f2 over here there are the importing and exporting parameter you can see it operation info and something called cv defer mode 
I wanted to show you this CV defer mode in my last video, but that was the older version. I was not able to show you, but just I want to show you this is the CV defer mode. How the CV defer mode will work as soon as you make this CV defer mode equal to X, then what will happen? It will not run our default implementation. This will not call this, this all the methods, log get entity set method, get entity method, delete entity method, modify entity method. Those methods it will not call as soon as you put this CV defer mode equal to X. As of now, you can see CV defer mode they are clearing over here. Means in that case, it will call this respective method for get entity, delete entity, modify entity. If here we didn't implement it. If you have some implemented methods, uh, those methods will be called. In this case, create deep entity we have. So these methods will be called if you if you don't do anything. You just uh, in the dollar base operations. But as soon as you re-implement this chain set begin method, and uh, uh, if you re-implement, how you re-implement? Same way, you have to re-implement here, you have to redefine here, and you have to make CV defer equal to X. As soon as you do CV defer equal to X, instead of calling this all the methods, it will call change set process. You have to write your own code to update, delete, modify, whatever you want to do based on the input criteria that you have to do in your own code. It will not call the default methods, all the entity sets method, default method, it will not call for that purpose. I'm not, again, I'm not doing any coding and showing you, but just explaining you, you just what you have to do, uh, you can redefine this one, control C, what you have to do, you have to call this one, copy this one, I didn't do myself, just to show you guys, and you have to click on enter, control V, and you have to just click on redefinition, control space, redefinition, and Tab. you can click on control one and you can go in sc24 and also you can do add implementation and what you have to do as soon as you do this one and you have to make the cv defer mode equal to x as soon as you will make the cv defer mode equal to x then what will what will happen if you uh, if you call the dollar base request in your case uh, this one uh, what where is that request let me which I shown you just now. Suppose in this, this request, you call this one and you implement. In this case, we have employee ID. We have to pass the sales order ID and all the things. If you call this dollar base request in that, that case, what will happen? What will happen if you put this defer mod equal to X and you call inside this dollar base, you call the this method, get entity set method. It will not call this get entity set method no more and get entity method. Even you write the, uh, this dollar base, uh, do, you, you will write like that dollar base get uh, sales order number and you give some sales order number, it will not call get entity method. If you make this defer mod equal to X, control and let me do, if you make defer mod equal to X in that case, you should not, and it will call, instead of calling that those method, it will call the, it will call the change, uh, the change set process change set process method. We have to do the implementation for the change set method as well. Once you do this one. Let me do that also. I will do the implementation, but I will not do any coding there. So let me, so uh, this is change set begin. So one more thing you can see here, how the change set begin work. They are setting the update task local, whatever they are doing updates and they are doing in the uh, in same work process instead of doing the update in the different work process. Uh, if you don't know what is the set update task local, again, I recommend you to watch out my update function module video. There I have explained in very well. So this is the thing. If you do change set begin and change set and also you can re-implement, you have to re-implement re this also. Control C and second thing you have to re-implement this also. Control V and you have to write the redefinition and control one you have to do. Or oh, not dot, you have to put comma. Control one you have to do. And you have to add implementation for this method also and change it and leave it blank uh, because after at the end of this method as i told you commit work will happen change set begin and at the end of the change set and method if you do commit work or not inside this no matter at the end of the this matter method the come after this method the commit work will be executed and the third thing is change set process again that also we have to re-implement control c there we have to write our code how we will write that I will tell you, but I will not gonna write code this time uh, here. So let me 
same way control v redefinition you have to do and comma you can use the sc24 also control one and a implementation for this uh, this one and here we have to write our code if you see the importing the, now the it will not raise any exception uh, previously it was raising the exception if you have multiple operation and in this case if you if you put this cv defer mod x this method will be called if you don't put cv defer mod equal to x then this method will be not called based on the entity type also you can call and you put based on if else condition based on your requirement you can alter this particular cv defer mod cv defer mod is as soon as you it become x here it will call this method and instead of calling the get and uh, sorry delete entity method or set uh, update entity method or modify entity method so what we will do if you see the f2 over here again i just want to show you how you will get to know what operation you have to perform so you will be having each and every de detail in the it change set request if you click over here if you click over here again you can see what is the operation type you have to perform what is the operation number these all the details you can utilize and you can implement this method if you click on the operation type uh, what i mean the operation type you click you are doing the cre you want to do create deep entity uh, you want to just create the entity you want to delete the entity or you want to delete the stream execution this stream and all we will discuss in future video so based on these values we can see what what actually the query want to do based on that query we can write our own code in this method and instead of uh, calling those create deep entity method or another method we can perform all the operation here and that operation will work over here like that we have to do uh, this process uh, this is available again i'm telling above 7.4 and support package 9 only so let's go next thing uh, as I told you, I will not implement and so yeah, I just guided you. If you want to do, you can do yourself. I mean, if you have any doubt, you are facing any issue, you can put in comment section. May I can help you. Okay, so this is done. Uh, the next is the same thing I told here. If you are opening the same thing in SE24, it will look like this. Change set begin, change set and change set process in this application service runtime interface. And you can re-implement this one. You right click over here and you can re-implement. You can use Eclipse and you can go in SE24. There also you can re-implement. The same thing they are clearing here. Instead of the clearing, we have to put X. Then it will, instead of calling those methods, it will call the change set process. Instead of calling individual update delete method, it will call this one. We have to move, we have to make sure we have to put the X. The next thing we have to write our code in the change set process. Let me pointer let me do something okay so you can see not laser pointer i want i want something pan or highlighter highlighter will be good so you can see uh, instead of calling that uh, that change those method it will call this change set method we have to implement this as well so we have to make sure that is again important thing again the same thing i'm explaining we have to make this is x then we have to implement this one and whatever we are doing again uh, it's with it will be executed in the single LUW which you should you should not use in the chain set process any commit work and commit work automatically happen at the end of the chain set and method so that is the only uh, theory part again it is returned whatever I have explained you let's discuss something about the performance now because some uh, performance considerations so do use the dollar base send the data several requests in a single HTTP request from the client to the SAP gateway server for entity types they are not associated uh, in our case sales order header and sales order line item entries was associated but some of the case we want to get the data from the back end which which is not associated entries suppose i want to get the sales order data and purchase order data there is no relationship between uh, the data and i want to get the these two entities together in that case what i can do it i can put in the dollar base both the get request and then I can process and uh, I can get the uh, I can get in one hand instead of getting the sending these two parallel requests to the back end do use parallel call, calls in case of two reads calls or two update calls with the multiple atomic unit of work and an alternative to two parallel calls you can consider using dollar batch there is two things one is the parallel call and second is the dollar batch dollar batch means we are putting both the request in one request and we are calling one request parallel call means we are sending the both the request parallelly so we can consider both 
and if th these are the entities are dependent on each other obviously we have to use the dollar wage if you are not dependent we can do the parallel call also both the calls we can make parallelly uh, that will run independently of each other in the client uh, server side and we will get the response and we can put those both the requests in the dollar base as well and we can get the detail both way it will work but do use dollar base in case more than two calls without association entities if we want to make the calls from the backend system and we don't have any relationship between those uh, those entities and we have more than two entities data is there then we have to definitely use the dollar base we have further recommendation of SOP that we will uh, see in up upcoming videos. Then what, how the dollar batch will help if we put both the requests or multiple requests in one uh, request itself and dollar batch and we, have, we will send to the backend. There are a lot of things will, it, in that way it will help. One is the round trip. Uh, suppose uh, we, have, we are sending the same data in the multiple uh, calls. So it have to go come back and go come back or it have to go parallelly like that we have to do. But in this case, it we can avoid when we use dollar base, it will reduce the round trip between the end user means client browser and the SAP gateway server. Not only between the client and SAP gateway server, between the SAP gateway server and the actual backend system, it can be ECC, CRM, any system it can be there. Between them also it will reduce the round trip. And dollar base reduces the SAP gateway server response as well because you are getting the entire uh, request one hand, it is processing in one hand uh, instead of getting the two requests parallelly. If we get one request, so it will reduce the uh, resources of the SAP gateway server, not only the resources of the SAP gateway server, but also our actual or your ECC system where it our uh, we are fetching the data or we are modifying the data, there also we can modify the we can write the code within the change process and if we want to update the all the data using the uh, in within the one uh, one one luw or that kind of something we uh, something means we can improve our program there and in that way dollar batch will help us to execute multiple queries together so these are the consideration again performance consideration I didn't made myself, I just copy pasted from the SAP standard documentation. So that is the reason I'm repeating again. And there are something that only consider the balance between the number of round trips and the payload size. Sometimes we, what we have will happen, we will think like that. Uh, we will be having the, uh, if we put everything in dollar batch and we will get the data, it will be, uh, it will reduce the time and at the gateway server level, we will be not having round trip. But sometimes what happens, the client need the, Quicker data. We put everything in dollar batch, and there is huge data, and it is taking the time to get the data from the, the from the backend system to the gateway, gateway to the front end, and it, uh, instead of doing that thing, if we put that thing parallelly, and we are required data, which is really required data, we can get first and later point of time, we will get the another data. In that way, we have to think about: Do we need really dollar batch or not? The, there is two things. One is the number of round trip and second is the payload size if if you have the payload sizes more then it is go it it will be go better we will get the required data and display and remaining data we can go second hand then we can get and display like i showed you in last uh, sap application they, they are using dollar bits but they are just getting the using the skip and top they are ge getting only the 20 or 20 entries only and next trip they are getting another 20 entry to display on the screen like that it should be you should not get entire data in the dollar base whatever the required if you get entire data it will take time obviously and your browser will go like this it's data is loading data is loading this will not happen so that is the reason it's telling we have to consider between the round trip and payload size we have to think about it and then we have to uh, act accordingly considering using the dollar base because it can have negative impact on the response time since sap gateway calls and sap business sh shoots in sequential order so that is again same thing they are telling no need to go in further and most important slide the following table help to choose the required option between we have dollar expand as well now we have dollar base also we, we have the parallel call you don't understand parallel call so again i'm telling uh, i got confused initially what is parallel call parallel call means uh, whenever the front end guy need the request it will just uh, ask multiple requests together parallelly instead of prior sending one request 
coming back another request it will send both the get request together and get the response that is called parallel calls instead of putting those both requests in batch and sending one it sent two calls together in the backend system that is called the parallel call and dollar base you know just now we dis discussed and expand also you know from my uh, previous video the related entity uh, we can get together or we can update together using the deep deep entity or cre deep create entity or deep uh, get the expand expanded entities sorry so in this case uh, if we have two calls there are number of calls from the in the operation means if you have two calls what you have to do and if you have more than two calls then what you have to do means you are getting the two calls or more than two calls for example association read there are two entities there have the some relationship then you can either you can use dollar expand as well or you can use do the parallel call suppose we have sales order and sales order item uh, relationship we can use dollar expand and get the data or we can get the data separate separately also uh, using the parallel calls we will get the data header and line item uh, we will make two call from front end and we can get and if you have more than two calls means if you have associated entity you have sales order and sales order item also then sales order and customer also sales order on material description also there are multiple entity associated with the one header entity that you all the entity you want to get then better to use dollar expand because you will be going to get all the data together instead of making the parallel call if you make parallel call there will be a number of call based on your how many entities you are getting from the backend system so this is the when you have associated entities then you have to make sure this kind of things and second thing read without association if you don't have any relationship between the entities then and you have only the two calls you have two entities which needs to read then you directly go uh, with the parallel call if you have more than two calls then put those in batch uh, two or three then put those uh, read operation in batch all the entities work whichever you want to read update delete and then you can use the dollar batch also and uh, next thing update with the with the multiple at atomic unit of work these two are all about the read operations this is about the update operations and means if multiple atomic unit of work means a related entity you want to update in the system one atomic unit uh, means can contain you can consider one chain set as a one atomic unit that we we will be having all related update which we want to do in the database so if it is asynchronous parallel calls also we can do and we can use the dollar batch also and if you have more than two and 10 cent entities you can use the dollar batch if you have only two calls two two chain set you can make parallel uh, calls also and you can use batch also and but if you have more than two you should use dollar batch and last thing update with the single atomic unit of work if you don't have if you have only single chain set then you always good go with if you have two calls or multiple calls it's not way matter you just go for the dollar batch so like that you have to think it out you have to read this table this is again sap recommendations i didn't edit even single line from this all the points i just read it out or i try to explain whatever it is written okay with that we come to the end of the video so before going to next video Please like this video, share this videos with others as well so they can also learn and don't forget to subscribe my channel and you can follow me on the LinkedIn also. You can search it out Ramnia04 on the LinkedIn and you will get my profile there also you can follow and you can ask if you have any doubt.